Hi, my name is Ebony. I am a poet, writer, educator, and I've both loved and hated poetry. Today's video is a deep dive into why people love to hate poetry and also why people hate to love it. I will be exploring the hatred of poetry as well as the emergence of contemporary poetry, insta-poetry, and then trying to make sense or answer the age-old question, is poetry really dead? <laughs> So I need to tread carefully and try not to insert my own subjective beliefs. Obviously there will be a few of those, but clearly I am very close to this form of art. And I just want to say whatever your poetic preferences are in reading, I'm totally fine with that. My main goal, especially with my channel, is to get more people to read poetry. So is this by no means a way of me to shame any person for reading whatever type of poetry they like. If you're reading poetry, I'm happy. <laughs> My understanding of the hatred of poetry began a few years ago when I read The Hatred of Poetry by Ben Lerner. I thought this book was really interesting as an avid poetry reader, specifically a contemporary poetry reader, I think that this book really expressed a lot of things that I felt towards poetry, especially growing up in an education system where poetry by old white dead men was favored, especially more traditional poetry. And this book is Ben Lerner's exploration of why he hates poetry and then also why a lot of poets themselves hate the form. What kind of art has a condition of its possibility a perfect contempt? And then even reading contemptuously, you don't achieve the genuine. You can only clear a place for it. You still don't encounter the actual poem, the genuine article. Every few years, an essay appears in a mainstream periodical denouncing poetry or proclaiming its death, usually blaming existing poets for the relative marginalization of the art. And then the defenses light up the blogosphere before the culture, if we can call it a culture, turns its attention, if we can call it attention, back to the future. But why don't we ask what kind of art is defined, has been defined for millennia by such a rhythm of denunciation and defense? Many more people agree they hate poetry than can agree what poetry is. I too dislike it and have largely organized my life around it. Do not experience that as a contradiction because poetry and the hatred of poetry are for me and maybe for you inextricable and i've never felt so <laughs> seen within the first few pages of a book because it's so true and as i've mentioned there is always this like resurgence which just happened pretty recently of a piece going up in the New York Times, for instance, of a writer saying, poetry is dead. There are no amazing poets right now. And with people like Ocean Vong walking the earth, <laughs> with Sharon Olds walking the earth, Tracy K. Smith walking the earth, that is blasphemous. Like it is totally wild to even come to that conclusion. But I do think as Ben Lerner states, that the problem with poetry itself is poems. And what that means is basically the poet themselves being an imperfect capture and also the limitations of language to express specific emotions, heavy human emotions and human experiences like grief, like falling in love, like existential dread, immortality, and fitting that into a form that is so technical or once was technical, which we'll get into, is so technical and also at the same time limiting and can also feel very far or hard to reach from a reader who is an average or casual reader of poetry. I think that the hatred of poetry itself stems from this inability of 
readers, especially casual readers, to feel seen and also to feel as though the piece is accessible to them, which is why the education system and so many people get turned off by poetry in school. It's because you're often told and encouraged to approach reading poetry as if it's a puzzle to decode and to sort out when really, at least from my personal experience as a poet myself, my goal and my objective is to get you to feel things and see things and also uncover or have a discovery with in yourself or the human condition through reading my poems, through reading a poem. And I feel as though that is a goal for a lot of poets. So I think the hatred of poetry stems from that, which is why once we go into our next topic of modern poetry versus Instagram poetry, why there's like even a bit of like strife and <laughs> problems within those two groups of poets. First, let me define what the differences are between modern and IG poetry because a lot of the times those two things are conflated. Modern poetry or contemporary poetry is that like delineation from the traditional form and it relies mostly on free verse, which just means there is no rhyme scheme. It is all up to the poet themselves to use specific images and even rhythm. Even playing with form and taking what a traditional sonnet is and turning it into something more modern. So that's where contemporary poetry is. Now the difference between contemporary poetry and Instagram poetry is that Instagram poetry actually kind of even goes back into Tumblr poetry where a lot of marginalized people were finding a space and finding a platform online to publish their work. Now, the thing with Instagram poetry where a lot of lovers of and appreciators of both like traditional poetry and contemporary poetry hate on IG poetry is because people feel as though the language is very lazy the difference between contemporary poetry or what contemporary poetry hopes to achieve is that it still elicits visceral images and figurative language to continue on and to further <laughs> hold on to this, um, the point of the poem. Whereas Instagram poetry feels very easy to digest there's like very little effort a lot of people say it's like reading tweets so that's where the difference of that comes into play but i will say that i can't totally fault people for loving instagram poetry because as i said i think it is more so how i like to look at it is a gateway to poetry i actually when i first started getting into poetry i started reading like the rupee cores the amanda lovelaces even like celebrity poetry, which is why I'm not against it, but I think people take up an issue when it's kind of like held as a standard and then also used to ask the question of, is poetry dead now? I think people who pose this question are coming from the place of looking at poetry and how it has strayed from the traditional and kind of reinvented itself through now so many new voices, so many new people coming into the form that they feel as though poetry is dead or what we have come to know poetry to be. However, as I said before, with people like Tracy K. Smith, Ocean Bomb, Sharon Olds, Mary Oliver, like so many amazing poets who fit into that contemporary modern poetry timeline, walking the earth, it feels wild that someone would say just because poetry no longer fits into these traditional ways that literally date back hundreds of years ago feels wildly disrespectful and it also feels very lazy because I can guarantee that a lot of these people journalists who write these articles are only looking at the popularity of Instagram poetry and as I said Instagram poetry is more so a form that is very easy to read honestly it's super easy to read very accessible and a lot of women and marginalized groups like reading Instagram poetry 
which is a whole nother topic for another day. And it just feels wild to me that someone can take that delineation of the traditional to the modern and say, okay, poetry is dead. I just think that poetry is being reclaimed. And I think that as things do, as the world changes, as people gain access and technology grows, our outlooks on poetry are changing. And I feel as though right now, there could not be a more exciting time to participate in reading poetry and engaging with the community. There are so many amazing poets who have platforms who are truly doing amazing work and pushing the genre forward while also making it still accessible. Which goes to my point, I think people equate like the exclusiveness and the level or degree of difficulty of reading a poem to like how successful a poem is or <laughs> the aliveness of the poem which is like what like shouldn't we want more people to read um yeah it's just like very bizarre i don't know if i'm making any sense because this is really off the cuff like i wrote very brief notes but i didn't write a script or anything it's really a circle <laughs> so i don't know what the conclusion is in this video i don't really think there is a conclusion to is poetry dead well actually yes there is poetry is not dead so yes that is my thoughts on the hatred of poetry why people love to hate poetry and also why people hate to love it um as i was saying earlier i can totally relate to that feeling there are periods when i'm reading and writing so much poetry i feel like intoxicated by the process and by the words and how language can capture and cause revelations for specific feelings that i even find hard to articulate or write down and then there's other times where it feels so abstract and so hard to achieve that it almost feels impossible um but then also poetry being defined as Ben Lerner stated, like so many more people can agree on the fact that they hate poetry versus actually defining what poetry is. Like is poetry the poem itself, the finished product, or is it the entire act of a poet trying to capture, as I was saying, these very ephemeral elusive intangible feelings that we experience as humans and writing it down in a language that is limited um yeah it's a lot to chew a lot to ponder on but i think that's it for now thank you so much for watching and i truly look forward to seeing you in the next video if you enjoyed this please hit the like and subscribe button it's totally free and it just helps me and my channel out. Thank you so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.